In this video, we're going to be discussing graphs of polynomial functions. So let's first start by talking about what a polynomial function is. So a polynomial function is any function that has a degree bigger than 1, where the degree is the highest exponent. So we know what quadratic equations look like. The parent function for a quadratic equation is y equals x squared. <coughs> and because the highest exponent is a 2, this has a degree of 2. Similarly, this is a cubic function, which has a parent function of x cubed and a degree of 3. We're also going to be looking at quartic graphs, which have parent, a parent function of y equals x to the fourth and a degree of 4, and quintic functions, which have a parent, degree, or a parent function of y equals x to the fifth and a degree of 5. So one thing we want to talk about is the end behavior of polynomial functions. So the end behavior is going to be different depending on whether a function has an even degree or an odd degree. If the degree is even, then both ends of the function are going to point the same way. So if I think about that, if I think of, if I draw like a coordinate plane, okay, if the function is of an even degree, then both ends of my function are going to point the same way. They're either both going to be pointing up, or maybe they're both going to be pointing down. But either way, on the left and right side, they're going to be pointing in the same direction. Now with an odd degree polynomial, they're going to be pointing in different directions. So if I draw myself two coordinate planes here, if they're odd degree polynomials, then the ends of the functions are either going to be one pointing up on the right and down on the left, or up on the left and down on the right. So even degree functions uh, point in the same direction, odd degree functions point in different directions. And you can tell which directions they're going to point in based on the leading coefficient. So the leading coefficient being the first, the coefficient of the first term. So if I gave you something like y equals 2x cubed plus 4x squared plus 8, the leading coefficient would be this 2 out here. It's the coefficient of the first term. So the leading coefficient is going to tell you what ways the arrows point. If the leading coefficient is positive, then the right side points up, and if the leading coefficient is negative, then the right side points down. So if it's even and positive, then both ends of your function are going to point up. If it's uh, odd and negative, then the right side will point down and the left side will point up. So we can use that to answer some questions about problems. So this one says determine the end behavior of the functions below. So I've got y equals ax to the fourth plus bx cubed plus cx plus x. Now I can't just put this into a calculator because I've got all these numbers here. But what I can do is I can take a look at my leading coefficient, which is positive, and my degree, which is even. So the leading coefficient tells me that on the right, my graph points up. And the fact that it's even tells me that both directions point the same way. Now, I don't even have to know what my function looks like between them to know what the end behavior is. Okay, all I need to know is what's going on at either end. Positive tells me the right side point up, points up. Even tells me they point in the same direction. So if I look on the right-hand side, if we remember that up is infinity, right is infinity, left is negative infinity, and down is negative infinity, if we remember those, then when I go to do my end behavior, on the right side I've got an arrow pointing up and right. Right is infinity. Up is also infinity. On the left-hand side, x is going to negative infinity, because that's left, and y is going to positive infinity, because that's up. Now for this second problem, once again, I'm going to look at my leading coefficients. 
Okay, it's negative. Negative tells me that the right side is pointed down. And I want to look at my highest degree, which is odd. And odd tells me they point in opposite directions. So if right is going down, left is going up. So I can then go and do my end behavior. On the right, as x goes to infinity, y goes to negative infinity. On the left, as x goes to negative infinity, we're going up, so y goes to positive infinity. So that's how we can use the equations to come up with the end behavior. We can other, also go the other way, and we can use the end behavior to determine uh, the degree and whether this is what the leading coefficient is. So if I look at A here, I'm looking at this graph and I'm gonna tell a couple things. One, if I look at the ends of my graph, one of them is pointing up and one of them is pointing down. And because of that, I know that my degree is odd because they face in different directions. And then I wanna look at the right side because the right side is going up, that tells me that this has a positive leading coefficient. For part B, I'm not given a picture, I'm given my end behavior um, here, but I can kind of use that end behavior to draw a little sketch. So if I draw myself like a coordinate plane, I know on the right, as x goes right to infinity, then f of x goes to negative infinity, which is down, so my arrow on this side is going right and down. On the left, as x goes to negative infinity, which is just left, then f of x is also going to negative infinity, so that's also down. So both my arrows point down. So I know that my degree has to be even because these are pointing in the same direction. My leading coefficient then, because they're both pointing down, has to be negative. So that's how we can use graphs with our coefficients and our end behavior. All right, turning points. So the turning points are the points in the function where the graph changes direction. So if I take a look, oh, that's not what I wanted yet. If I take a look in this one, I have two turning points. Okay, this one right here, and this one right here. Okay, so those two points are the turning points of this function. Okay, all they are are it's the point we can see where on this one the graph is going up, and then it hits this point, and then it comes down, hits this point, and then it changes direction again and goes up. That makes those the turning points. If we have a turning point that is higher than all the points around it, that's going to be called a relative maximum. Okay, so this point right here that is higher than all the rest, that's a relative maximum. If the turning point is lower than all the points around it, that's going to be called a relative minimum. So this point right down here is a relative minimum. So I've got relative minimum, relative maximum. All right, these are the directions on how to use, uh, how to find turning points using your graphing calculator. So you just put the function into y equals, you look at your graph, you hit second trace to bring up the calculate menu, and then you use the maximum tool for relative maximum, minimum tool for relative minimum. I don't actually have a graphing calculator on my computer here to show you, but uh, I will we will talk about how to do this in class. So let's take a look. So we're gonna use the turning points to graph the following function. Okay, so using my graphing calculator, I'm able to come up with turning points for this function at 0, 4 and 2, 0. Okay, this also has a zero at negative one, zero. And once I know those points, then all I can do is I just simply go on here and draw in my graph, which is already here for us. So let's take a look at another example. This one, we need to use our, use our function to graph it and fill in the characteristics. So I've got this function, f of x equals x to the fourth plus two x cubed minus two x squared. All right, so some of this stuff is new. Some of it's a repeat of stuff we've done before. And some of it we can do before we even graph it. So if I look here, this function is even, okay? The fact that it has an even degree tells me 
that both of my n behaviors should be the same. And it doesn't have a leading coefficient, or I can think of my leading coefficient as being positive 1. Okay, and so because it's positive, these should both be infinity. And actually, this one I have written down wrong here. It should be positive infinity. Okay, so I know that the way my graph is going to look, they're both going to be going up on either side. Okay, I know that just from looking at the equation before I even draw a graph. Now, I'm going to show you what the graph looks like. Looks like this. Okay, and let's talk about some characteristics of it. First off, the domain. All right, we can see I've got the graph is going forever to the left, it's going forever to the right, so the domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. For the range, it has this lowest point down here that's at negative 8, and then it goes up to infinity, so my range should be, oops, that shouldn't say negative infinity, that should say negative 8. So it should be negative 8 to infinity. Now for relative minimums, it has 2. It's this point here at negative 2, negative 8, and this point here that's really hard to see, but using a calculator I found that it was 0.5 and negative 0.9. Okay, so once again in class we'll discuss how to use the calculator to do that. For the relative maximums, it only has 1. It's this point right here because the graph goes down, then up, then down, then up. So it has this relative maximum at 0, 0. Okay, as far as our intervals go, increasing and decreasing. Okay, I'll just show you what they are. Let's talk about how we come up with these. So the intervals actually have to do with your relative minimums and relative maximums. Okay, so this graph starts by decreasing, and it's decreasing till we hit our first turning point at negative 2, negative 8. So it's decreasing from negative infinity to negative 2. Then it's going up, it's increasing from negative 2 to our next turning point, which is at 0, 0. So it's increasing from negative 2 to 0. Then it's decreasing from 0 to our next turning point at 0 0.5, negative 0.19. So it's decreasing from 0 to 0.5. And then it's increasing from there up to infinity. So from 0 0.5 to infinity. So that's how we figure out our increasing and decreasing intervals. For our zeros, we've got three of them. So one, two, and three. And using a calculator, I came up with the at negative 2.7, 0, 0, and 0.7. Notice that 0, 0 is a relative maximum and a 0. That's totally possible. So that is all the stuff that you need to know about the graphs of polynomial functions.